check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. So the acclaim come out afterwards, and I don't know if this is another technical issue or if this is some sort of 40 chess, but God damn it, Max goes to do a rap again and his mic doesn't work. It's yeah. like, is there a storyline here that's like going way over my head? Yeah, no, I, I think it is a storyline. What the hell's going on? So his I, mic I, doesn't work, and then it's even more awkward. This is why I think it actually was a technical issue, because it had technical issues earlier, because his mic doesn't work, and so Dax tries to save it with a promo. He goes... Well, you know, uh, the fans here and uh, the audio people, they don't want to hear your your promo. And he starts to do a promo, and then he pauses and he goes, I'm not as eloquent as these other guys on the mic. Well, just get through this wall of people. And so they start this brawl, and it gets broken up. It was weird, dude. It was weird. Christian and Patriarchy did a promo. I just remembered something. Remember on, on Monday we were talking about uh, Seth and, um, and uh, Dakota? It was it was it was uh, done for injury reasons. Oh, Dakota Kai, yes. Yeah, yeah, and Seth too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't just um, now. I, I mean, I don't know how. I, did you hear anything about how Dakota? Because I didn't hear anything about her. Wait, you, know, you said it was done because they're both injured. Yeah. Okay, I did not hear that about Dakota. Okay, yeah, I don't know how serious. I all I heard is that I asked if those were storyline covers for injuries, and I was told they both were. Um, but Seth is not a, a bad situation. Like Seth is cleared. He could wrestle, but, um, you know, he's banged up. And so it was a good time for him to take time off and do this. So I don't know if he'll be back for the pay-per-view against um, Bronson Reed. You know, I mean, obviously he's going to wrestle Bronson Reed. Dude, he shouldn't back. be back for a while after that beating. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was interesting because, you know, the whole thing is that pay-per-view very clearly set up punk against seth and now they're in another direction yeah so christian the patriarch you do a promo and he announces that this saturday on collision it'll be the bang bang gang versus house of black winners are number one contenders and get a title shot at wembley but he will be the special referee i think we can all see where this is going yeah he's gonna try and screw both teams and they're both gonna end up getting the match three-way at wembley would be my guess Cam I, I think so. I think so. Camille beat Jasmine Howe and Clara Carter. And uh, these were the saddest looking jobbers I've ever seen. They look like they're going to the morgue. And mm -hmm. Taz calmly says, looks like Shivani in a production meeting. Died. Mm -hmm. So Camille kills him. And then Mercedes comes out. And she says, you fans better not chant for the DMD because she's not here tonight. And she and pauses. They, and they didn't. No one chants. No one and chants. she goes, Really? You guys better not chant for her tonight. <laughs> yeah. And so she starts doing her promo, and she says you're the, she's the first woman ever signed AEW, but they always say that Brit is the first but never the best. These two titles tell you I'm the best in AEW. And then Shivani shows up, and he says, I just heard from Tony Khan. He has overruled the elite, lifted the suspension. Britt Baker is here via satellite. And Britt cuts a promo, and essentially she says... Next week, I will be back, and I'm going to find a way to get my hands on you. And she says, if you doubt for a second that I won't be able to figure out a way, don't, because you can trust me. I'm a doctor. So she'll be back next week. On the By show. the way, I should mention, we, we did mention in the news, that there is a new show that debuts Saturday, this coming Saturday. Like, boy, did they have a lot of time in advance to build this up. There's a new show Saturday at 10, after Collision, called... Was it TNT Overdrive? Yes. TNT Overdrive. And AEW wrestlers are going to be all over it with the idea of, again, attempting to keep the AEW audience for a third hour with another form of programming, which has not worked particularly well um, in the past. But it is, given that it, it is, given this is a new series on the station with AEW, it is a sign that uh, the station is is, you know, still promoting AEW. So, um, you know, a lot of people have talked about the idea, you know, again, until it happens, doesn't happen. It's a weird company right now. But, um, I mean, there are no signs that they are not going to keep the show, you know, um, at least right now. I mean, like, you know, any, anything can happen. Zasloff can be, you know, replaced tomorrow, and, and uh, people wouldn't be shocked if that happens. And if that happens, then 
you know, all of these negotiations and everything, you know, depending on who's in the, in the position, might be good for him, might be bad for him. You don't know. But, um, you know, I mean, as of right now, I mean, people who are just because there's no deal announced thinking like, is this a bad sign? And it's like, I don't consider it a bad sign when they're still promoting all kinds of stuff. I mean, the financial situation ain't a good sign, but the idea, like, I think it's very clear that they want to keep AEW. All right, the uh, main event, Brian Danielson, Jeff Jarrett, no DQ match. This Jeff Jarrett, holy smokes. Man, this guy was there the whole time, and they worked a hard pace. They fought all over the place. They fought up the stairs. They fought to the concessionary. They were hitting each other all over the place. Fight back to the ring. Jarrett works him over. Brian makes his comeback. They do the figure four spot. They do chair shots, striking battle. And finally, he goes for another stroke, and Brian sends him into a chair in the corner. It's a chair-assisted. Uh, Busaiku knee gets the pin. Busted up Jarrett's chin. Yeah, and it actually was behind his. It was behind his ear that kind of bled down. It looked like, mm-hmm. but the point is, he uh, he gets the pin, and uh, they said that they had, they had advertised Steamboat that Ricky around. Steamboat was going to be like the special guest enforcer. No, he was over the referee. He did commentary. Yeah, he was he was advertised to be the referee and he did not referee. He was but he was there. So um I'm guessing that he got uh, that maybe physically he felt he couldn't do it. I mean, the story is is that it was a Tony Khan change. But Tony well everything's Khan, a Tony Khan change. He's in charge. Yeah, but I mean, usually when they advertise something and they were advertising this late as the day of the show, um they usually aren't going to change it like but whatever. I mean, they did what they, you know, the idea was they were trying to do the thing of three generations, the Ricky Steamboat generation, the Jeff Jarrett generation, and the Brian Danielson generation, three generations of stars on this station uh, together in a match. Because Jarrett was in WCW during that period, and obviously Steamboat you know, was Jim Crockett Promotions and, and early. Um, um, actually, actually, when they got on TBS first, I think Steamboat might have been on his way out he might have even been gone because they got on crockett because steamboat was never on georgia championship wrestling um or he may have been like there may have been a week here and there that he was but he was never a regular or anything like that i do remember seeing steamboat on best of in tapes from the carolinas every now and then but um you know he was not a regular in, in gcw and then uh uh but in like you know i mean he had he had the big run in 89 another one in like nine you know in their mid 90s you know with rick flair and everything and um you know and then of course jeff during the wcw run and then brian danielson during the aw run so that was the idea and then the final shot would be the pose with all three in the ring with steamboat raising their hand so that's what they did yeah he got in the ring all of jared's crew got in the ring brian and jared hugged and then swerve's music hit and he came down and he said, you know, I just saw three legends of TBS, Jeff Jarrett, Ricky Steamboat, and myself. That's we have well all done. been world champions on TBS except you, Danielson. And he says, man, if you look like this shape right now after facing Jarrett, just wait till you get done with me. And he says, I want a warm-up match too. You got, uh, you got Jarrett this week. Next week, I go one-on-one with Wheeler Yuta. And Wheeler's like, I'm no damn warm-up. And they go face to face, and and Brian says, uh, or Swerve says, Brian, I want you to have a front row next week so you can see the most dangerous man in AEW. So that was a show, and then uh, yes, afterwards they're interviewing Jeff Jarrett backstage, and uh, he gets attacked by the Hangman, and they have a big brawl. And as they're brawling, there's another brawl with Mariah May and Tony Storm. They, they they've been brawling for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes at this point. So it does, in fact, look like it may be Hangman and Jarrett at Wembley. Mm-hmm. And Okada and uh, Claudio, who are going to do a face-to-face on next week's show. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.